Here's your Forbes Daily Briefing for Saturday, April 20th. Today on Forbes, the Cannabis Civil War, Hemp versus Marijuana. In a building formerly owned by the pharmaceutical company Roche, in an industrial neighborhood of Indianapolis, Indiana, a state where marijuana is still illegal, a former high school quarterback with a college degree in biochemistry is surveying his warehouse filled with millions of dollars worth of gummies and vaporizers. The products are packed with Delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol, aka THC, the psychoactive compound in weed known for getting people stoned. And while local police have raided vape shops selling these cannabis products, Justin Jornet, the CEO and founder of 3Chi, insists that he is operating within the letter of federal law, despite the fact that the state's attorney general, Todd Rokita, believes he's committing a felony. That's because Three Cheese products are made from marijuana's cannabis cousin, hemp. In 2018, the federal government legalized hemp and all its derivatives, isomers, and extracts through the Agricultural Improvement Act, or what's known as the Farm Bill. And since hemp and marijuana are different varietals of the same plant, cannabis sativa L, they contain the same compounds and hemp can be used to make products of similar potencies, or even stronger than those found in state-regulated marijuana dispensaries around the country. So long as each 3 chi product is made from hemp, defined as cannabis that contains 0.3% of Delta-9 THC or less, they are technically legal at the federal level. Armed with the Farm Bill, 3 chi and its competitors sell these products online, across state lines, at gas stations, convenience stores, and other places where marijuana is still outlawed. Many entrepreneurs, like the 41-year-old Jornet, have had similar aha moments, realizing that while federal legalization for weed has stalled, they can sell legal cannabis products that still get customers high. And all of this has resulted in hemp becoming a bigger industry than state-regulated marijuana. In 2022, hemp product sales reached $28 billion, while legal marijuana products generated $26 billion in sales during that same period according to cannabis data firm Whitney Economics. Jornet, a mild-mannered, blue-eyed Ohioan, says, quote, The distinction between marijuana and hemp is ridiculous, but we don't mess with marijuana. We stay on our side. The federal government has set out rules around hemp, and as long as you abide by those rules, you're a federally legal company. Meanwhile, the animosity between the hemp and marijuana industries which could actually be considered one $54 billion industry fighting the government for full-blown legalization, is growing steadily. Cannabis companies and lobbyists are urging lawmakers to outlaw hemp products on the state and federal level, especially since hemp companies are subject to far less onerous regulations. Jornet says, quote, It is, to an extent, a civil war. They're using prohibitionist tactics to do to us that they had done to them by the government. Despite what the Farm Bill states, there is still plenty of debate about whether hemp-derived THC products are legal at the federal level. That's because several things are true all at once. Hemp-derived cannabinoids, including Delta-9 THC, Delta-8 THC, a less potent compound that is affectionately called weed light or decaf kush, and others, are legal under the Farm Bill if those compounds are derived from the plant naturally, meaning if a company takes a heap of hemp and extracts THC, that oil is legal. However, most intoxicating hemp products on the market, including three cheese, are made by converting hemp-derived CBD isolate into Delta-9 THC or Delta-8 THC using a chemical process. The DEA's section chief of drug and chemical evaluation has said that synthetically derived THC is a controlled substance and therefore illegal. The DEA, however, has yet to enforce that rule. Almost 20 states have banned Delta-8 and other hemp-derived cannabinoids, including states like California, which views hemp products as a threat to its $5 billion marijuana market. The FDA has been granted authority over hemp-derived cannabinoids, but to make matters even more Byzantine, the FDA says it needs an act of Congress to fully regulate hemp products. The result is that the $28 billion hemp market is a giant gray economy standing up precariously thanks to the Farm Bill. Chris Lindsay, a lawyer and director of state advocacy and public policy at the American Trade Association for Cannabis and Hemp, says that intoxicating hemp products are both legal and illegal at the same time. He says, quote, 
In a world without federal enforcement, people are willing to gamble and take it as far as they can. The reality is that there are no rules. For full coverage and to see our third annual Cannabis 42.0 list, which features 42 leaders and innovators blazing a path forward in this industry, and was published yesterday, check out Will Yakowitz's piece on Forbes.com. This is Kieran Meadows from Forbes. Thanks for tuning in.